Hey, everybody, welcome back to another conversation. Each time I enter this room, and you have to understand the room has nothing in it. But what happens is magic happens as soon as people come into the room. These are people that I have no idea who they are. 10 minutes before they come into the room, I didn't even really know they existed. In this case, I have to say, I knew this man existed, but I know nothing about him because a friend of mine, quote unquote, a friend, someone I've gotten to know, someone who has been a stranger in this, in this room, um, said to me, you got to talk to this guy. And I said, sure, you know, let's just do it. So I invited him in, but that's, that's all I really know. In the green room, we've had a little bit of a conversation and we're gonna share some of that conversation with you in here because I think it's so valuable for us to hear how people think and how people who are really good at what they do, really talented, sought out, sought out professionals in their field, when they move away from the moment of being who they are and start to think about who they are, get off a crumb. And, and they, don't know if they're, if they don't know if they can say it in the right way or they don't know what they can do. I had someone in the room the other day who just, who just said, boy, I, don't, I, you know, I, I know what I do, but I don't know how, do I, how I do it. So what, what do I say? I said, just say what you're saying. And all these are experiences for us all to see that we're all really human beings. You know, Even if we're good at something, it doesn't mean we're perfect at something and it's okay. We don't have to know how to say everything exactly the right way. We're going to talk about that a little bit later, but I shouldn't go too far without mentioning that the show is sponsored by The Mosaic. It's the book over my left shoulder. It's a story about a boy who loses his parents two years apart on the same day. And when he asks the adults where his parents are, they tell him they're in a place called heaven. So he sets out in search of the place called heaven. But the people he meets are not the holy men and the shamans and the medicine women or the Aborigines elders or the ministers or priests or the, or the holy people. He meets common ordinary people. He meets the trash man and the road worker, the blind woman and the juice man, the homeless guy and the gardener. And he wonders why, why of all the people I could meet or am I meeting these people? They, don't, they just seem so common and ordinary. They don't seem like they have anything that they can tell me about what heaven's like. But he says, I'm here with them. I should sit with them and just listen to them tell me their stories. In 100% of the cases, when he listens to them share their stories with him, what he realizes is the person he originally saw is not at all the person he's sitting with now. They're completely different. And it isn't because they changed. It's because he gave them the opportunity to tell them who he was. And he saw them, given that opportunity, he saw them completely differently than he originally seen. Them. And when it happens over and over and over again, he asks himself, I wonder, if I, don't, if I see anything in the world the way it is, or if everything is just a reflection of how I see it. And he asked himself, can I get out of the way long enough that I could just see the world the way it is? And almost in answer to that question, he looked to his right and he sees a monk unzipping the sky and inviting him to walk through to a parallel reality where he, where he goes and he meets the wise one who's the keeper of the mosaic. In those moments, something happens to Mo that changes his life. That's the trailer for the book. That's the obligation I have to my sponsor. My sponsor will be very happy if you like that story and decide to buy the book because they, they would love that. I'd also love it because I'd like to have conversation with you about your experience of it as you go through. But that's, we've done, our, we've done our obligation, we've done our duty to our sponsor, and we thank you, sponsor, for sponsoring us. Now, we have the opportunity to, to experience what's going to happen in this room today. I am lucky enough to have with me James Ayat. He is, he is in the green room, I found out he is in Costa Rica. I am in San Diego. And look at the power of the internet. Look at what's possible. That we can sit face to face. And I feel like this brother is right here in this room with me. And I want to just say, James, welcome to the conversation. How are you today? Thank you, Daniel. Um, beautiful, by the way, uh, the mosaic, what you just described. Um, 
I know why now we're talking, we're here today. Um, I'm feeling really, really good about this and I can feel the energy before things happen. It's kind of a gift I've discovered over the years. So I just want to say the energy was very familiar. <laughs> uh, your energy, our connection, <clears throat> it was very similar. And it's like, we've done this before. We're not, we're strangers, but we're not really strangers. So <laughs> it's just yeah. up to, uh, it's that familiar. So yeah, the brother is sitting in this room. I feel you. And uh, I'm really grateful to be here. Thank you for allowing in this time together. It's my honor and my privilege. And I just want to already invite the guest, the, the guest who is the listener into this conversation. And I just want to ask you, do you know the feeling James is talking about? I sure do. That feeling of meeting someone for seemingly the first time, but knowing you've known them for lifetimes, for thousands and thousands of years. And I want to ask you, how do you piece that together in your own life? Like, it's not important to me that you tell me how or you do it, but like, how do you, how do you embrace that experience? Do you shun it off and say, it's not possible? Do you accept it and say, oh boy, this is beautiful. Like, it's good to see you again, old friend. Like, what do you do with the information you receive on a day-to-day, moment-to-moment basis when you sometimes see somebody and you just know that you know them, even though you haven't ever been with them in this, in this lifetime, at least? Uh, interesting, right? It is. It really is. Um, you know, as, based on familiarity um, and the feelings, because I'm learning to trust my feelings more, my body, instead of my head. Um, you know, I feel the journeys from here to here on this planet, embodying this, this vehicle known as a, a body, which is really only 0.00001% of who we are, meaning the rest, 99.9999, is pure spirit, pure energy, um, which is the whole planet as well. So it's a grand simulation. It's uh, the biggest show in the universe, as far as I know, um, right now, center stage. and and to experience energy as it is, we need to get out, like you said, get out of our own way. And that's getting out of here and coming to here. Yeah. Yeah. Um, and so that's been my journey. And I'm sure all of our journeys, whether it's now coming up or it already came and went, but uh, I know it's also not our first rodeo together because we've, <laughs> we've, we've all done this. We kind of made pre-contracts before coming in to this experience that we were going to do this and we were going to do it differently. And I don't want to say right, get it right, because there's no right or wrong. There's no good or bad. It just is. It's all energy. And it's an experience and it's an opportunity for soul growth and evolution and how we embody that and how we do that is really choice. And, and so to choose to, let's say, get out of my own way and to trust because the core to everything is trust everything. I, if you have a, an organization and you have a company or you have a, a department or a community where I'm, where I'm in right now, if you don't have trust within that container, it's just not going to happen. Or let's put it this way. It'll happen bumpier than smoother. Yeah. Um, yeah. And it is all about self-trust. It's not about what's outside of you. That's just simply a reflection. And so anyone and everything, all experiences are simply a reflection that you're creating because you're that powerful. And so we're powerful beyond measure. And we have no idea the immensity of that until we take the plunge and jump into that and say, yeah, I can trust. Um, I don't know what the, the answers are going to be. I don't know where I'm going. I have no idea what it's going to look like. Um, but you know what? I've learned so much from my experiences thus far to this point in time that I can honestly trust because it's repeated itself again and again yeah. as efficacious, meaning it's better than any double blind study and science that can prove anything. But if it happens again and again, over and over again, um, and it's like deja, you can call it deja vu, by the way, that's what a lot of people will call it when, Hey, I know you or you're familiar. Um, yeah. Um, it's, this must be deja vu. We've had this experience before. However, it's, it's more than deja vu. It's absolute real time, present time, because there's no past, there's no future. Yeah. It's the now and only the now. 
that's documented scientifically too with subquantum physics, where you you can combine past and future because that's just a mind concept. So we can create time to have a framework that's safe to work within because we can measure it. But when you get rid of time and space, because there is no, no such thing, you're totally in the moment all the time. <laughs> There's time, um, but you're also channeling the divinity of everything because it's all energy and you're all energy. Yeah. So you're, you're truly in that moment, bringing in as that vessel out of the way, purity and clarity to the degree that your filters inside are cleared out. And that's the process from my experience in facilitating for others, probably 30 years now, um, um, an evolutionary process that I don't know. I, I think I'm going a little bit too far here. I don't know. I'm just going on. I'm, I'm on a stream of, <laughs> you're good. You're good. I could keep going with that, but, um, <laughs> I want to, so, uh, so let me jump in cause you paused. Yes. Um, to the listener, when you hear James speaking, what do you think? And I'm particularly interested in those of you who think, this is something weird or something odd, or you haven't heard this way of thinking before. Because those of you who are thinking, who've, who've heard this before, it, it's like all, it's, this is like being in a comfortable living room chair. But I'm interested in those people who don't, who haven't heard this before. And do you have this scope to allow yourself to hear something that's completely different than something you've ever heard before? And where do you put that information? First of all, do you, do you, are you able to listen to it and accept it? Are you able to listen to it and hear it, even if you don't accept it? And where do you place it when you hear it? What do you do with it as it enters into you? Do you immediately say, I got it and push it aside? Or do you say, huh, this is really interesting. I haven't heard this before. I wonder what would happen if I explore this a little bit. Just an interesting place for you to take a note, not only in this conversation, but in every conversation you have. Because in this room, I've had the opportunity to, to hear th hundreds of different things from people that I've never heard before. And it makes it such a rich, beautiful experience to see the world through another perspective. And it's really beautiful for me to be able to do that. You said something, and I, I, I mean, you said so much, but the one, the one thing that I, I, I wanna just ask you about is something you said when you started off in the beginning, you said, I sort of see things before they happen. Can you talk to me about that a little bit? Um, well, I don't, I said I feel things more than see. Okay, feel things. I'm what they call an open empath. Um, I've done a lot of self research, self work, and there's different modalities and tools out there to figure out, you know, basically remember who you are and what you carry in. And I, I'm a, Hypnother I've been doing hypnotherapy for 25 years. So with that, I know there's past lives. We, I've done regressions for people, um, current life, past life, and they proved themselves again and again that they were accurate information, myself included. When I was becoming certified, I had to go into a past life regression myself, and I just thought I was making it up. And I said, this is just a movie. You know, I'm a skeptic at heart. I was a skeptic all the time. Prove it to me is what I would say. That was back in the 90s. Um, and in doing so, I, I got, it, was, it proved itself to me over time, but it's, it's usually always in retrospect. It could be days, it could be weeks, it could be years. You look back and say, oh my gosh, that's why that happened. This makes perfect sense. That was a precursor to what was gonna happen here. And had I not gone through that experience before, I would not be prepared for what's happening right now. Yeah. So the learning of that is, in retrospect, I can actually, well, in learning about me, I felt, I've learned that I'm a feeler more than, I'm wide open. I can't block energy. And if I try to block it, because I used to do that, I'd resist. What you resist persists. So all those filters I was talking about, I get distortions in my energy field and, and it would sink down into the physical body, become pain, discomfort, injuries, um, because the physical is the last thing where things show up in our bodies. And it's also the last thing that clears out. We could be healed in the field, our energy, and the body has to release its symptoms or the distortions 
last because it's the most dense part. Even though it's the smallest, it's the most dense part. So when I'm working with, um, you can kind of have distortions in your field energy coming in. Um, and I feel them because I'm open. Um, if I don't address those feelings, then it sinks down. I call it condensates down into the physical body becomes symptoms or um, distortions in like a stiff neck or that's all about not being flexible, by the way, if you have a stiff neck. Um, being more flexible, it will help you get rid of the stiff neck. Um, but you know, other things that, that just show up. Um, and then I go, I have to look at that and find out where that's coming from or just take different modalities to clear it. Gotcha. So when I'll use you as an example, when you ask the question, you know, how do you, can you explain what you feel ahead of time? The best thing is um, to describe that is the energy, everything happens like this in the field. Immediately a thought goes out, boom, it's, it's happened, it's done. And when you hear of the word thought forms used together, no. you form physical aspects. Of, let's, let's call it this reality outside of us with a collective bunch of thoughts that humanity has created this reality, which is all energy, but it looks physical, feels physical, but we've created it. So when I feel someone coming into my field, when I set up sessions for people, I kind of know what they're going to be going through when the session comes. I can feel where their distortions are because my body's my litmus paper test, let's say, because I can't block energy. So I'm kind of a walking transmuting device. I'll transmute distortions in every field, everywhere, or persons, and that's what I do. I can't even put words to it, what I do anymore, but that's, um, I show up. <laughs> I do do that. I do show up. Um, but I, I already, their, their healing happens before the session. How's that? That's probably the best way to put words to it. So, like, I'll, I'll ask them, what happened in the last 24 to 48 hours? And I said, usually that's the biggest indicator of what triggers were going to come up in order for you to have a soul learning lesson before you actually have the session when we meet, I just peel the layers away, get rid of the physical stuff and, I'll, and anything that's in your field um, to the level and degree that I'm clear as a yeah. template. You can tap this template, this energy template to clear that. So okay. that's an example of, you know, to the degree I've done my work, you gotta do your self work, that's key. I mean, if I wasn't doing my work, I'm not walking my talk, then it's not good or bad, right or wrong. It's just, I'm gonna attract the same frequency of beings that are not doing their work to the degree they're not doing the work so that we can come together and cancel it out like homeopathy and clear it. If, you, if you're open to doing that, you have to be open to wanting to clear and, and evolve. Otherwise, it's just not gonna work. But that's how, I don't know if that explained how I feel people coming in. Like I felt you, I felt silky, if I could describe it. I felt a very gentle, warm heart, big heart. And I'm talking community global heart. Because there's the personal intimate heart, which is about relationships in, in an intimate way with one another or your relationship intimately with you. That's the personal heart. But the global heart, I felt I felt a huge global heart with you and it was super silky and really gentle and like, like in like a fireside chat, you know, you, you invite somebody to your home, you have a fireplace, got hot cocoa and whatever else, really feel at home. <laughs> so I, I don't know if that answers your question, but. No, it's beautiful. I. I it, and it isn't important to answer the question as much as just to hear the answer that you give. So that's, I, I, I'm, I'm happy there. Okay. What, what makes you happy? Wow. You know, it's funny, you're, you're spot on because I've been assessing that lately. Um, I'd have to say the number one is to um, be of value and service to others is my biggest joy. It used to be dancing because I've danced since I was like five years old. Wow. It still is. I can, but I like dancing with a lot of people and it's called ecstatic dance. Dancing your prayers is what it's called really. Um, and I love doing that because I can feel the energy clearing so much when we're dancing our prayers. That's, that, that would be second on the list, but it's been first most of my life. Um, I love what makes me happy. Um, Hmm, it's really good because I've been saying to myself and, and others, I feel flatlined lately emotionally. 
it's an uncomfortable feeling to be in the middle or flat line. There's no extremes, not sad, sad, and not super ecstatic. But I feel like what what's next? I'm, what's going to inspire me now? I've done so much yeah. in this life. And I'm here in the middle of a jungle, 52 acres. It's really, I have no car, vehicle. I'm living simply off, I'm growing food. I love gardening. Um, and I'm pretty off the grid and, and yet people are finding me. I've never marketed. People just find me. Um, I call it a soul call, not a roll call. And, and so when they come to me, I know they're ready and it's divinely orchestrated because I didn't go look and trying to make something happen. So I, I want to pause you for a minute because I want you move from what makes you happy to how people find you. Oh, I, yeah. I just want to hold you back into the space because what I think is interesting there's a character in my book. Can I tell you a little bit of a story? Please. One of the characters, one of the archetypes in my book is the beast. And the beast? beast the beast, yeah. Okay. Uh, um, and Mo discovers him as he's walking on his journey. And what he's done with the beast is the beast has, has embarrassed him throughout the course of his life. He's done things... He's made him look ridiculous. He's done things that are crazy and wild and powerful and passionate and, and lustful and all those things. And, and, he, and the beast was out of control. So what Mo did is he locked him in the, in the bottom of the, in the, in the basement of his house and put bolts on the door and, and shut it tight. And as Mo's walking in the, in, on his journey, the beast is broken out of that room finally and he's been locked away for long enough. And the beast finds him and enters him. And the only way Mo really realizes that's happened because he's so been so disconnected from his beast is that he realizes his shoes are torn and broken. And he comes into a town and he meets the shoemaker. And the shoemaker says, boy, those shoes must have an interesting story. And he looks down at his feet and he sees his feet are not his feet, they're the feet of the beast. Oh. And the beast has entered into him now and Mo's gets scared. And the shoemaker says, tell me the story of those shoes. And as he starts to tell the shoemaker the story, he tells him that he's locked them up. And the beast hates being in these shoes because he feels trapped and confined again because he's, the shoemaker is blending beast and Mo together again. But the, the beast doesn't want to be blended right now because he doesn't trust Mo because he's locked them up for all that time. Where is your beast right now? Where is that thing that has, that frightens you, that excites you, that, that is full of passion, that is embarrassing to you, that you, you can't control, but it has no, but it has this ability to light you on fire? It's your lust and your love and your passion and your glory and all of that together. Where is that in you right now? I feel like I've um, been in the process of integrating the beast for a while yeah. Yeah. Um, as me, as opposed to denying my shadow. Yeah. I'm sure you have heard of dark nights of the soul. Sure. In the last 15 years, I've had three really deep dark nights. And that's why I pulled away from doing what I do and kind of hiding in a jungle, really. Um, I, I've gone this far, not planning up. Before this, I was in Hawaii, Big Island, so for seven years. So I've been remote. Um, and the beast, I'm making friends with the beast yeah. in me. I'm loving everything that I would term as shadow. And... It nearly killed me, literally, physically, twice in the last four years. Um, I came close to death. Uh, this past year, uh, the doctors have basically said I had to go back to the States four times and had blood work in the internet. They basically said if you didn't come, you were, you, you were pretty much gone because I lost like 15 pounds and I've never changed weight since I was you know, 19 years old. So it was significant. And I've just now, in the last six months, I've gotten back on my feet physically. Wow. I'm good. I'm just coming into more energy and power of embracing the beast. Um, 
running from it and resisting it. Yeah. And the more, more I ran, the more it chased me down. And you can't run, but you can't hide from yourself. And I run all over the planet to 22 countries running from this beast. Wow. So, so it's, um, not, it's not by chance that that story just came to me. That's interesting. No, you're spot. <laughs> I think you're channeling. <laughs> <laughs> no, you're spot on. Um, yeah, so the, I, I, someone said this to me just last week, actually, because they could see me. They could see what I was going through. And they said, um, <clears throat> you know, in the Bible, the devil was an angel a fallen angel and he didn't want to be under anybody's leadership. He wanted to leave. Yeah. He, she, whatever. Um, and when the darkness comes to you or someone's carrying something dark or they're being dark or, um, they're not necessarily trying to attack you or hurt you. They just need the light that you're showing, that you're carrying, that you're holding. They need love. They just want love. So the beast in me just wants love yeah. to be accepted, to be understood, compassion. I realize that easier said than done. Yeah. However, the, um, the analogy that the person gave me is it's, it's just like a, a bug to a light, a light bulb. The bug will risk its life. It will kill itself just getting to the light. And that's really happening globally right now. Um, there's a big division, as you said earlier, going on between the beast being accepted, let's call it the 1%, the controllers of whatever, the government. That's a beast that needs light, that needs love, that needs energy. And if you can accept that as an outside reflection of the collective of all of us and love that beast, whew, game over. We have heaven on Mother Earth. I love it. And heaven on Mother Earth is an inside job. Are you, <laughs> do you get uncomfortable talking about yourself? Yes. Um, Tell me about that. I have to say I do because of being judged for being different or weird or um, not being accepted. Those common things, um, I think, that are very common amongst many. So if um, I could strip all of that away in this room and just and just really have you know that that won't happen to you in this room, that you will be completely loved and accepted because I see you. Right. I know who you are. Yeah. I, right. Absolutely. That you're completely loved and accepted, that there's no judgment going on here. That you're acknowledged and validated for what you believe. You don't have to prove yourself to anybody. You don't have to stand up and deflect from you so that nobody sees you. Because what I'm hearing, and take this with a grain of salt, throw it away, if, you, if it doesn't make sense, promise me you will. Put it in a trash can and don't hold it for a second if it doesn't resonate. I promise, I promise. Okay. Um, <laughs> Everything about you, everything from inside of you wants to be seen. And your beast is showing up to say, see me, feel me. Not to see the beast, but to see the totality of the mosaic of you when you come whole together into this world. That the mm -hmm. time for hiding is over. That it's time for you to become visible. And that it's time for you to not so much teach as just to show up. When we were talking in the room before, or maybe it was we had, we were recorded here, I can't remember when, you said, I do know, I don't know really what I do, but I do know I do one thing, I just show up. Mm -hmm. That's all that's being asked of you right now, because who you are is so beautiful, that when you show up, you make the world around you more beautiful. You don't have to do anything, you don't have to say anything, you don't have to help anybody, you don't have to fix anything. You just have to show up in that presence. Does that make any sense to you? Yeah, you're channeling again because <laughs> one of my famous, well, I'll say common lines is brush your teeth, comb your hair, and just show up. Yeah. And, you know, I can facilitate that for others. Yeah. All of what you just said 
it's just about doing it for yourself yeah. is is the real deal that's the that's the, the whole purpose of being here on this planet so one, this of the re- so one of the reasons why i love these conversations is because we think we're alone in all that stuff we think we're the only ones that feel that but the more we have conversations and i've had hundreds of them and i've had thousands of them before i've started recording the conversations is what we really are good at for other people we don't know how to do for ourselves because we were never intended to do it for ourselves we we were meant to come together with like just like the effect that we have when we're with somebody else we need to be able to receive that from someone else who wants to give that to us too and we're we live in a world where givers give so much we've forgotten how to receive we're taught it's better to give than to receive and so we feel selfish if we receive and so we just give and we give and we give but we're longing most of us i'm not this is a lob over the net for you to answer i find most of us are longing for the opportunity to find someone to do for us what we do for them and yet we hold them in a little bit of bay because we don't we don't trust it or we don't we try, we, not that we don't trust. I don't want to get black and white on these things. You see, I'm a black and white. I have a black and white book. I have a black shirt. I have a white wall. Uh, <laughs> but I, I don't want to be black and white, right? Um, You're far from that. You're <laughs> all right, all right. So, so the, it's just time for us to not operate on our own, to not hide anymore, to know that those people around us, when we show up, the people, the, there'll be those who tear us down. Of course there will, but that's okay. The, 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 we need to love them in, the way, in that way too, because it's just what they do. And they just want to be heard and accepted. And, and if they were heard, they wouldn't need to tear us down. If they were listened to, they wouldn't need to yell. If they were, you know, it's just, we all, we all go through that process but I don't want to get away from the main thing that I hear you saying to me that I want to say back to you, that your soul is saying to me as I sit here and listening to you, please help him to see it's time for him to come out. He's been hiding long enough. It's time to be seen. Again, trash can rule in effect. If it doesn't make sense, please throw it away. Thank you. Absolutely. Thank you so much. Really. I normally don't do that on this show. That's not what I'm, what I'm here, but somehow I just felt no. called to share yeah. that with you. I, it's perfect. It's really perfect. Thank you. Yeah. Um, it's been a big one. Yeah. Cause I was in the limelight for 15 years, in New England, when I was doing what I was doing and I went into hiding after that. And it is way too long. I, I need to come back out and not worried about limelight or anything like that. It was just to be out. And I, I, I see what effect that has when I do go into crowds or places with many people. I see of course. the result. And I want you to know you have a big fat guy in California that's in your corner. Oh, <laughs> okay. <laughs> You know, I feel super supported by that. I, I want you to know, even yes. though I just met you and you're a stranger, I just yeah. feel, wow, yeah. thank you. Yeah, and so I'm here for you in whatever you. way that means. And I'm not, that's not financial, that's not sales, that is just I'm here to support you. I feel you on that. I definitely feel you. Thank you. Wow. So having had this conversation now, what's important to you? <laughs> being out there really and, and helping and facilitating what I came here to do as a soul. Wow. And I know, hold on, hold on one second. I'm sorry. I just want to ask the listeners, did you feel the shift that happened just right here? Did, Did you feel the difference of where the conversation just went? Do you feel the realization that just came through? Not because of anything that I did or, or that James did, but just by, sharing the energies coming together, sharing with each other and opening up the space for something that he's real, that really is important to him to be seen and acknowledged. I'm sorry, 
I didn't mean to interrupt, but it was such a big shift from where you were when we started that I just wanted to highlight. Thank you. No, it's a good highlight. Um, I didn't even recognize the, that big of a shift in terms of what you're explaining. I did feel stronger, definitely, in, in what I said. said. I do, did feel the energy behind it as more clear. Um, so thank you again for that. Yeah. Um, I don't know how it's going to unfold. I don't need to know the details. That is, all you have to do is say yes in the universe. Yeah. Fill in the details. I know that. Yeah. So I'll just keep showing up. <laughs> and what I love, because, and again, if I can just use this conversation as an example, because I, I see me and you, and, and if we were having the conversation and you were asking questions, you would, see, you would see what I'm saying now is true about my own self, right? That we are able to talk it so easily to somebody else, right? But then when, we come, when it comes to seeing how is it going to, like, you know what thought forms are. You know what you can manifest. You know, we spent the first part of the show talking about, or the conversation talking about how our thoughts become thought forms and those forms create our reality and this is what happens. And then when it comes to our own particular case, you say, I don't quite know how it's going to happen, but I just have to show up and be there. But those thought forms, when, when that thought form opens up, there's no place for it to go but to show up. Yeah. Right? I mean, you know that. I do. <laughs> uh, that's a, the journey from here. Yeah, I, I, <laughs> yeah I, 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 and I'm saying it to you, but you don't see that there's an invisible mirror right in front of me. So I'm really just saying it to myself. I, I see it. No, okay. I, do, I do see the mirror. <laughs> so I'm just talking to me, having a conversation with me about me. So that's, you know, I want to add to that. It's a beautiful reflection. I want to say it's a beautiful <laughs> reflection. <laughs> Thank, Thank you, Danny. Absolutely. You are, you are that. Do you feel listened to? Not necessarily right now, but just in general. Most of the time. Yes. Most of the time I do. But I'll just say when I don't, it's because it's the ones that are closest to you, like family, that doesn't hear you because of their own, the family filters, let's call it. Yeah. Um, the whole point of my belief, my belief is we pick our family and choose who we're going to evolve with. And if you get it right with family, if you have that respect that we have right now for each other here on this, in this call, this connection, um, all relationships are one after that. Everything is smooth. It's, it's all about your family, really. And working that out with your family, as you can call it karma, past life, whatever it is, soul agreements to clear contracts or work with one another to come heart to heart, to be like this. And so I've just noticed that I've really cleared all that with my family. I'm ready to launch because my, my brother owns this home farm. It's called Home Farm, by the way. H-O-M-E stands for Heaven on Mother Earth Farm. I, I love that. I have to say that because you, you talked about heaven in your, yeah. in your parts of your book. So, um, so you're saying I have to come down to Costa Rica and come to Home Farm. You're, you're more than welcome. I'm not going to tell you what to do, but you're more than welcome. <laughs> you, I love I, it. you would love it. You would absolutely yeah. love it. Um, and, and so... Yes, I, I really am ready to, it's funny because I'm ready to leave the jungle, but I don't have to leave the jungle to do what I do. I know that with modern technology, like you said, we're here you are in San Diego, I'm here and we're right here yeah. together. Yeah. And so, because of right now they just, um, they're clamping down on the borders again. Yeah. yeah. And they're allowing visas to go all the way to March now. We don't have to go three months at a time and go and get them stamped and come back. They're basically, something's happening, and it's pretty big. And I don't know if, I, I, I'm feeling drawn to say something about that, if that's okay. Sure. Um, my perception of this from, you know, years and years, lifetimes of experiences up to this point in time, remember I said, everything is a learning that prepares you for now. So what I've been prepared for now to say and share right here with everyone, and you is there's two timelines 
this planet in this really critical, crucial evolutionary leap that we're all experiencing. And it's all about choice. So, and it's all about frequency because we're all energy. So what choices are we making? Are we choosing to follow the drama of the media or the programs that are out there that are running and have been running the, the eons? I mean, Bruce Lipton and other famous great authors and books, basically, you know, you're in hypnosis for the first seven years of your life and you're programmable. You're like a sponge. And I, there's no mistake that I fell into becoming a hypnotherapist. I didn't do that because I wanted to. I was doing it without knowing I was doing it, helping people relax. So after doing 25 years of it, which is me hypnotizing me to get rid of all the programs and the unconscious things that I'm talking about here that, so that I can be clear to help others and at the same time help, was helping others do the same thing. The point I'm making is pick your program. Pick your frequency. So if you want to see heaven on Mother Earth, what does it look like? What does it feel like? What does it smell like, taste like? Look what to you. Keep your frequency high. Follow your joy, dancing, whatever it is you love to do. And, and be with people. Be with friends. Come together. Um, because seven people together, let's say praying or doing anything, whether it's a sport or dance, seven is 100 times the power of one. And then one individual can shift the entire energy of New York City to the degree that they're enlightened and awake and vibrating and resonating at a high frequency. Literally, this is all documentable stuff. Yeah. And so I know this and it's time. And the next three months are very, very key because there's going to be, you know, astrologically, it's bringing up a lot of, let's say, drama and tumultuous, um, let's, let's say, integrating the beast. It's an integrating the beast globally time and, and it's sending the love to that beast and, and to accept all that without judgment. And that's the number one thing is my own self judgment. Mm -hmm. You know, that I'm not good enough. I'm, I did something bad. Oh, I made a mistake. I could go on and on with the litany and then we can dig a hole and that's a frequency choice. Or we can keep telling that story and that's choice. Or we can make a new story. So there's two roads right now. It's a fork. You can turn the news off, get rid of the media, get rid of all that outside stuff because it is an illusion that we're creating and we can recreate that illusion to another timeline. We mm -hmm. just have it on Mother Earth, we'll follow your joy and then let go of the story. And right now, the next three months, I I'm, 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 can't underscore that enough. It's that critical. The more people we can get on, on board on that page, the more powerful. Seven is a hundred times the power. Love you're mad. Yogananda, who is someone, he's my guru. Um, no kidding. I'm not surprised. <laughs> it's a Babaji lineage. Uh, I love, Babaji is my, is my super guru. I mean, Babaji. Mine, is mine too. I, I love it. So Babaji who's, is who's guiding everything that I'm doing. But I, I discovered him through Yogananda. And Yogananda spoke of a world in which you either carry your portable paradise with you at all times or your portable hell. When someone asked them, what is hell and what is heaven? He said, it's just the container that you put yourself in. And so I would like to throw something over the net for you to respond to, which is, I don't differentiate sound from sound. So I can watch the news because I feel like I want to be involved in what the world is going through and feel what the world is going through because I'm an empath and I want to feel what those feelings are, but it doesn't touch my portable paradise unless I bring down my portable paradise and walk in my portable hell. Hmm. Well and when, I, when I take down my portable paradise and I say, okay, I want to experience portable hell, boy, it's scary. But we all have the choice to choose a portable paradise. Your thoughts on that? just two words it's an inside job or is that three it's a, it's an inside job yeah so you're absolutely spot on um heaven on earth is an inside job so if you're okay from the inside out yeah and everything else outside of you is going to be okay yeah it's because that's your reflection that's your frequency of what you attract so you're absolutely right um you know um how can i put it 
interesting. Okay, so I, for me, let me let me see if this musters up something for you. For me, there's an underlying myth to the reality that we have that things out here affect things in here. Sure, they do. That's what I was going to say. You just what a perfect. You just triggered what I was, I was going to say. Um, from our upbringing, let's say, or our, just our environment in this, on this planet, um, everything has been a stimulus from the outside in, yeah. whether it's food, whether it's behavioral addictions or substance addictions or you know, panacea, the prescriptions and so on, all these different things that we look outside of ourselves for acceptance, <laughs> others, what they think of me, what their feelings are, um, everything outside of us has been our kind of like, you know, I, I need a hookup. I need, yeah. need to feed me through the outside in instead of the inside out. Yeah. So it's been a journey. That's another journey. Like the journey from here to here is the journey from the same thing inside out in another way. Yeah. I love it. Makes sense. I don't know if I totally, can put totally makes sense. Totally makes sense. Do you feel like the world listens? I mean, do you feel like, do you feel like people like, like like I think the earth, I, the way I asked it, I think it, it was interpreted. Do you feel the earth listens? And so I'm interested in that in that question too. But do you feel earth, the earth listens to what's happening in it in its world? Absolutely, no question. I can what, give you I can give you examples to prove that. Please, if you want, please. Um, yeah, this is where it could get weird for some folks. Um, Ten years ago or more. I was st when I started traveling, actually 2002, um, I put a backpack on and I had sold my house. I was guided to in a meditation. I said, what? I'm doing my soul work. Boom, boom, boom. This is perfect. Why would I want to leave? I have a perfect house, white picket fence. I had it all. And I just gave it all up. And I took the backpack and I hit the road. And I started seeing when I do my, I've been developing prayers over the years through my own experiences to create a container or and an experience outside of myself and inside myself, it gets my head out of the way so I can really to, truly be the vessel, a clear heart-centered vessel for what happens to come through me. So with that being said, I'd say I've developed prayers for weather shifts just wow. to adjust weather because that's an outside reflection. And I can't tell you, there's, here's effic efficacious again. It proved itself again and again, all over the planet, 22 countries, Wherever I went, I would ask for balance and harmony, and I'd say the whole prayer, calling in the devas, the elementals, the fairy realms, all the beings that are seen and unseen, that are in charge of, I feel, in charge of balancing everything out. But you have to ask. You can't wait to You can wait to respond, but if you want something, you need to ask. And that's also part of receiving. Mm -hmm. When you're ready to receive, you have to ask. And, mm -hmm. and you shall receive. So you have, you know, heaven on earth, you have the unseen realms and there's so many more unseen beings out there than we can even imagine than there are people on this planet. Yeah. So when you, I found when I asked and I called that in, it would rain, thunder, lightning. Uh, of course, I asked for grace and ease now. I, I've learned that one. I, I incorporate all these words to, as it evolved so that it would be the most peaceful, balanced, loving, harmonious result. So when I go places, I'm, you know, daily say those prayers, balance, and even at night when I go to sleep, so it works at night when you sleep. I see weather shifts all the time, all the time. And I used to think I'm making this up, and I'm not. Yeah. We, one person can do that. Can you imagine what many can do? So, we can stop, we can stop the fires. We can stop whatever, yep. whatever you want. One of the beautiful undercurrents of the mosaic is the fact that nothing is the way it seems. <laughs> wow, yeah. And, and, <laughs> and when we realize that nothing is the way it seems, it opens up the world for us to imagine what might it be if it's not what it seems. Mm. Like what are the possibilities of what else could be here if we realize that what we see is not what is or is as it, is as it seems. We're going to, we're winding down. So I just want to get a couple more things in because we could talk all day, I think. I think um, so. <laughs> and, and I would enjoy that. Um, you're really, you're really bringing me out of the closet. You know that. <laughs> I, I hope so. It's time, it's time for you to come out.
<laughs> it is, it is. <laughs> and, and, and I want to just invite the listener, just even with that comment, to just hear and ask yourself, what closets are you sitting in because you're unsure of what will happen when you are seen? And how can you hold around you, like this portable paradise that Yogananda spoke about, how can you hold around you this beautiful, transparent field of love that doesn't block things out, but just softens whatever judgments people have so that they can throw whatever dart they want at you, but it just comes to you as, as a kiss as it enters into your aura and into your field. Because there's no reason for us to hide anymore in closets. Yeah. And there's no reason for us to be, look what James is speaking about, of the ability to actually change weather, of the ability to stop fires, of the ability to bring heaven here on earth. And yet we're scared of what a few people say about us, not you, but just in general, all, uh, for the listener to think about. What, what huge world do we believe is possible? And what limiting belief are we holding that's keeping us from experiencing even the experience of our own self in this world, fully, re fully showing up, fully realizing, fully fully having the effect that we want to bring into this world. We were brought here to do something. Hiding in a closet is not going to be what gets it done. And when you realize that the creator doesn't reproduce the same thing over and over again, there's no need to. If what you've been brought here to do has already been done, there's no need for you to be here. So, what you've, been, what you've come here to do has never been done before, not in the way you're going to do it, not in the language you're going to use, not in, the, not in the way it's going to change you to do it. And because the universe is counting on you to do that, it it's, doesn't have in its plan for it to ever happen again through anybody else but you. Never been done before, never will happen again because in this moment it's happening through you. Don't you think it's time to stand up and do what you came here to do? And I'm not talking to James. I'm talking to the listener. <laughs> no, I'm talk and I'm actually talking to myself. <laughs> may, I, may I share something that you just triggered? Please. You know, I don't know the exact quote, but from the Bible, I was brought up a Catholic, and I call it, I'm a recovered Catholic at the moment, in terms of I believe in all avenues. Um, of becoming, let's say, what we already are, spiritual beings, having a human experience. And what doesn't work, like you said, just put it on the shelf or, you know, put it aside, what doesn't resonate. But from the Bible, there's something, a quote that said something like, there I walk through the valley of death unscathed, something like that. Yeah. The Christ in being, my estimation and my understanding, as limited as it is, is the being that, like you said, is impervious to anything and everything because they're pure love. Yeah. The inside job is done. Yeah. And that that's where we're all headed. We all have the ability to be that. And so that Christed being is not going to be affected by, let's say, bombs going off or natural disasters or cataclysms of any sort. I'm walking through the valley of death unscathed in peace and balance and harmony inside. Nothing can shake that. And what's going to touch it? What's going to stick to it? Nothing. Just more love. Yeah. In other words, to the degree that you have something that's uncomfortable, it's time to go inside and look at that because it's, it's your reflection. So <clears throat> that being said, I, I, I don't know if it's time to say I, I, I have a wish. My wish for everyone is that they integrate and love their shadow and all of aspects of that, seen and unseen, and 90% is un, unconscious, 98% is not even yours. Mm -hmm. So it's a big number of stuff that's out there that you just don't know about. We don't even know what's what we're dealing with. Yeah. All you have to do is continue to move into love, more love, more love, and know that everything else will just dissipate and release, dissipate and release. That's not love. Yeah. So to integrate all that shadow, that's I, that's my wish. Yeah. 
I'd love your thoughts on this and, and I appreciate that. What a beautiful wish for everybody and thank you. I've been playing with something the last few, maybe six months. I think because I'm getting older and the challenge of fixing everything that's wrong in this system is so gross and so big that I just got overwhelmed and thought, how will I ever become what I want to become when there's so much work to do? Yeah. And, then I ha and then I had this beautiful, beautiful sort of blessing that I felt, which was, you don't have to go through and change everything. All you have to do is just let it all go. Just let go of everything you are and allow a fresh new energy to come into your system. And it, it will recreate you because every day you'll just let go of everything that you, you received. Mm. And every day you'll receive more, more to just fill you. And I realized that is our breath. Every moment we inhale this fresh new energy and every moment we exhale everything that's inside of us. And our breath is just, it just gave me, the, it became my teacher in the process of just letting everything go and receiving everything in, letting everything go and receiving everything in. Your thoughts on that? That's, that's what I actually use um, in my sessions. Um, you breathe in through your nose, you're breathing in spirit, you're breathing in light. And we're in the middle of the photon belt right now in the galaxy and the amount of light pouring into the planet is immense. And to see, I have to visualize a column of that sparkly diamond white light, that divine light as a column coming in as you breathe in. And then I ask people to say those two words you just said, let go quietly to themselves as they exhale out their mouth. Wow. You don't have to know what you're letting go of. You don't have to know mentally the stuff that's going or physically, but it all goes. Yeah. And I, I, you know, I use visualizations key. And um, it's very important with your imagination. You can imagine your legs and hands and feet and arms as drainage systems, garden hoses. When you say let go, it just drains out and forms compost from Mother Earth. Love it. And you let it go. And then breathe in the spirit, breathe in light, and see that column. And then, and that's, so <laughs> I'm not surprised you said that uh, because <laughs> that's basically what I, I do. I facilitate I love part it. of it. I love that. James, I want to thank you so much for your time and thank you for being so open and vulnerable with us and sharing yourself with us. What a beautiful conversation this was and I hope it's the beginning of many to come. I hope so too. Thank you. And to the listener, I want to thank you so much for showing up again, for sharing your most valuable asset with us, which is your time, for being here with us and listening to fresh new ideas or hearing ideas you've heard before and just giving us the chance to love you and accept you through the vibration of love and acceptance that radiates out of this room. If you like what you heard, tell people you like about it. The beauty of our life that we live is when we taste the great food, we tell our friends, you got to taste this food. It's amazing. Well, when we hear, when we hear something or we hear a conversation we like, we can do the same thing. We want to just share it with the people we like who haven't had the chance to hear it. In that way, the things we like spread to the people we like, which then spread to other people, the people they like, and it starts to spread a message out to the world. In a sense, it becomes a mosaic, right? All the pieces start to connect through a universal feeling of, of, glue that is the glue that binds us together of what we like and what we feel. I want to invite you as I do every, every episode as we end to look at the beauty of what happens when you take time to sit with a stranger. I didn't know James from Adam or Eve when we, before we sat down. And look at the place we're at right now. This is my brother. I feel like I could, I feel like I could go to the heaven on mother earth farm and, and sit with him and be together with him and hold him and love him. And, and, and even if I never get to the heaven on mother earth farm, I feel like I can do that from a distance. He's my brother now. How long did that take? 
it yeah. happened in the first few seconds. But if you want to say it took an hour, let's say it took an hour. For a stranger to become a friend within an hour is not a special gift I have. It's just, it's a gift all of us have if we take the time to sit with another person and just want to get to know them. Make a stranger a friend. Find somebody online or in person that you don't know and just walk up to them and say, how are you doing? And give them the space to respond. You don't need to fix them. You don't need to help them. You don't need to change them. You don't need to convert them. You don't need to elevate them. You don't need to do anything. All you need to do is just hold the space for them mm. and love them. When the world is full of strangers, we live in a strange world. When the world's full of friends, we live in a friendly world. It's time to start creating a friendly world again. The world needs us to be friends again. James, is there one last thing you want to say before we go? Um, just thank you for who you are and what you do. And I love you. And I do feel the brotherhood between us. And, uh, yeah, and I, I, I do want, I have, we have the same goals, we have the same wishes for everyone to come together now as family, because we are family, and to love one another. Yeah. Thank you. Absolutely. Thank you, my brother. It's, it's been my honor and my privilege to get to know you a little bit, and I look forward to more. Likewise. Folks, hey. thank you. Until the next stranger comes into this room. Be kind to each other. Be gentle with each other. Create your portable paradise that allows even the hardest of people to feel loved and adored by you. Invite that space within yourself that no matter what somebody else does or doesn't do for you or to you, no matter what they say or don't say about you, that all you feel is love being given when I was about to set out on the trip that COVID stopped me from doing, of going from town to town and village to village and city to city and sitting on street corners and cafes and government offices and boardrooms and hospitals and prisons and all those places and speaking to the people nobody speaks to and listening to the people nobody listens to. I had a friend say to me, you'll be fine as long as you do this. Imagine every conversation is you talking to you about you. And when you see the world in that way, the world becomes an amazing mm. process of revelation for you. So there are no strangers. There are only friends waiting to happen. Make friends with the world. Be kind, be loving. And what you do for them, do to yourself also. It'll be a beautiful world you live in. Until the next stranger, thank you so much. Thank you again, James. And We'll see you next time. All right.